Thanks for logging on to this week's Elon Local News Web Exclusive. I'm Perry John. And I'm Brian Anderson. Here are the stories we have for you this Tuesday, April 21st. The Detroit Lions say Rodney Austin, a former Elon football player who played his senior season in 2011, was cut from the team today, less than a week after he was arrested on two charges of assault. The Mecklenburg County Police Report says Austin is charged with assaulting a female, assaulting a child under the age of 12, interfering with emergency communication and larceny. All four charges are misdemeanors. His court date is set for June 5th. Austin was a guard for the Lions, and here at Elon, he played as an offensive lineman and was number 64. In preparation for this weekend's Relay for Life, Elon's chapter of Colleges Against Cancer is celebrating Hope Day, or a day of fundraising for the cause. Colleges Against Cancer is trying to top their total from Relay for Life last year, which topped over $50,000. Throughout the day, you can help by donating cash, Phoenix Cash, or sending a donation through Venmo at Elon RFL. Anyone who donates can stop by the Colleges Against Cancer office in Mosley Student Center for a treat. Tonight at 7.30, CAC will host a luminary ceremony where a CAC member, Rachel Fenimore, says participants can buy a luminary for $5. This is new this year. We're really excited about it. And um, we're doing a bag for a bag exchange. So if you um, decorate a luminary and you turn it into us, we'll give you a bag of puppy chow or popcorn or some other goodies. We're going to have music. We're going to have um, luminaries all over, um, like outside near speaker's corner. So it'll be really cool. Relay for Life is this Friday at 6 p.m. in the Francis Center Fields behind the Danley Center and goes until 6 a.m. Saturday. Get ready to go green, Elon. Tomorrow, April 22nd, is the 45th anniversary of Earth Day, an annual event promoting environmental awareness. Here at Elon, students are celebrating all week. So far, the university has sponsored a river cleanup, a speech on creating a better food system, and a sustainability-themed college coffee. Not to worry if you missed out on these events. Elon's Earth Week continues until Saturday. On Thursday, there will be a farmer's market at the Elon Community Church Lawn from 3 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. And on Friday, Elon is hosting a garden workday at the community garden next to the Hillel House from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. This week marks the beginning of Stringing Us Together Week. The project was created to promote conversations about diversity and how Elon can improve its diversity relations. Students and staff can visit the table in Mosley Center to pick up an orange string bracelet to show they participated. The event runs through Thursday the 23rd. Lizzie Gielme helped organize the event and says the strings are an important reminder of diversity at Elon. The community has identified which are Elon students as lack of diversity and apathy about the fact that there isn't much diversity here um, as a huge need in our community to kind of discuss that topic more. And so this whole event is a week-long event that's meant to talk about that and spread more conversations and spread awareness of why diversity is important, what diversity we do have here, and where we can improve. If you're like me and take a study break with some ice cream, it's time to check your freezer. Popular ice cream maker Bluebell Creameries recalled all of its products after it discovered Listeria in their cookie dough ice cream. Bluebell recalled its merchandise voluntarily after tests conducted at several of its manufacturing locations showed unacceptable levels of the bacteria. CEO and president of Bluebell, Paul Cruz, said in a statement on Bluebell's website that all products will remain off the shelves until they're guaranteed to be safe. Well, from bad food to good food for a good cause. The annual Taste of Alamance at the Holly Hill Mall yesterday raised money for the United Way of Alamance County. More than 30 vendors came out to sell their food and a live band jammed out in front of the parking lot from 6 to 8 p.m. It was $35 a ticket and United Way volunteer Elizabeth Shumra says it was an easy way to give back. Everyone is kind of giving back to the community, even if they don't know it, they're all giving back, they all live here, um, they're all really helping out in their own backyards.
This year marks the 50th anniversary of the marches in Selma, Alabama, to protest against social and racial injustice. Bernard Lafayette, advisor to the well-known Martin Luther King Jr. and longtime civil rights activist, spoke at Elon last night to commemorate this historic anniversary. Lafayette spoke in the Isabella Cannon Room about the struggles he faced while fighting for freedom for people of all colors. Lafayette co-founded the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, participated in freedom marches, and faced extreme backlash as he fought for equality. Have mercy, a childhood favorite is back. Full House. Cut it out. Netflix announced that there would be a Full House spin-off series called Fuller House. It follows DJ Tanner and her three sons who gain some interesting roommates. Uh, these roommates include Stephanie Tanner and Kimmy Gibbler with special guest appearances from the whole family. John Stamos, also known as Uncle Jesse, is producing the series. But sadly, you'll have to wait until 2016 to watch the reunion. How rude. Hey, we should watch this together. You got it, dude. Well, thank you so much for logging on to this week's Elon Local News Web Exclusive. That's all the news we have for you, but make sure to follow us on Twitter at Elon Local News. We'll be right back in here in Studio A at 9.50 for ELN Morning Thursday. Have a great week, Elon.